Hello, my name is Kieran Mills and I'm going to be teaching a class on heat today. Um, I'm taking it from our notes, Chapter 2, Part 1. Chapter 2 is called Quantity of Heat. Um, the very first section in there, 2.1, is called Specific Heat Capacity, which I don't like saying specific heat capacity all the time. I sometimes short it to SHC. The symbol for SHC is small c. Let me explain the concept. I have some water here. I'm going to take a definite amount of the water. When I take a definite amount, that's called specific. And the amount I'm going to take is a mass of one kilogram. Mass, the SI units for mass are kilograms. I'm also going to take some copper and I'm going to take the same mass, a mass of one kilogram. Now I'm going to add heat to those. So I'm going to add heat to the water. Uh, heat energy is measured in joules. J. Now I want to raise the temperature by exactly one degree Celsius. I don't care what the starting temperature is, the starting temperature might be 20, and I want to raise it to 21. All I really care about is the change in temperature. The change in temperature is called delta. That's for change. And the symbol I'm going to use for temperature is theta. So I want delta theta to be one degree Celsius in each case. So as I said, I don't care what the starting temperature is. It might be uh, 20 degrees Celsius, and I want to raise it to 21 degrees Celsius. The question is, how much energy do I need to put into that water to make one kilogram of it go up by one degree Celsius? Now, they've done these experiments a long time ago, and they've worked out that the total amount of energy, E, that needs to be put in there is 4,180 joules of heat energy. So I need 4,180 joules of heat energy to make one kilogram of water go up by one degree Celsius. Now what about copper? Well, I'm going to do the same thing. I have exactly one kilogram of copper and I want its temperature to go up by one degree Celsius. So again, I'm going to add energy to it. The amount of energy that we have to add this time is 390 joules. So compared to water, I only need 390 joules to raise the temperature of one kilogram of copper by one degree Celsius, whereas I need over 10 times more energy to do the same thing to water. Those materials have a special property called their SHC, or specific heat capacity. You can see that copper has a much lower SHC than water. That means it's far easier to heat up copper than it is to heat up water. It's actually very expensive to heat up water. It's probably one of the most expensive things you do in your house. So it takes a lot of energy to heat up the water, but the advantage of that is it retains that heat for a longer time. So when you drink your cup of coffee or get into your bath, it doesn't go cold after about 30 seconds. So that property of a material, how much heat I need to make its temperature go up by one degree Celsius, that's called its specific heat capacity. And I'm going to give that a special symbol, the symbol C. I can say for water, I'm going to call it C with a little letter down here called a subscript. CW is equal to 4,180 joules. But that's per kilogram, for every kilogram. So I can write it down like this, per kilogram. And for every degree Celsius, the temperature changes, per degree Celsius. Now the way those symbols appear on the, on the physics paper is, you see that kg, that's actually kg to the power of one, 
they bring that above the line so it becomes kg to the power of minus one so this is how this this is how the uh, the number for c will appear on your physics paper 4180 joules kg to the power of minus one degrees celsius to the power of minus one so what does it mean well it basically tells me how much energy i need to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. You need to know the definition for that. The definition is in your notes on page six. So the definition says, the specific heat capacity of a substance is the heat energy to change the temperature of one kilogram of the substance by one degree. Now, the SHC of copper, well, the symbol of copper is Cu. So I'll write down C with Cu there, and that's 390 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius of copper. Those values, they're not in the table book. So if you get a problem on this in the leaving cert, well, they're going to have to write those values down on the paper. Now, I can develop that into a little formula. Think about this. Uh, to change the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius, I need 4,180 joules of heat energy. What about two kilograms? Well, if it's two kilograms, I'm gonna multiply that number by two. What about two kilograms by three degrees Celsius? Well, I'm going to multiply that number by 2 and then by 3. So here's a formula for the amount of energy that I need to put into a substance to raise its temperature. That symbol C, that's for 1 kilogram and 1 degree Celsius. What happens if I have more than 1 kilogram? Well, you multiply it by the mass. What happens if I have more than one degree Celsius? Well, I'm going to multiply it by delta theta. So I have a formula for SHC, and it's E is equal to mc delta theta. Now that formula is in your table book. You can see that on page six in your notes. That's on page 58 in your table book. And if they ask you for the definition of SHC, specific heat capacity, you could actually use that formula. You could learn it in words, or you could say, they've asked me the definition for SHC, you can write down the C on its own. C is equal to E divided by, slide the M and the delta theta down, M by delta theta. Now, if you write down the definition as a formula, Make sure that you write down what everything stands for. You have to write down that C stands for specific heat capacity. I'm writing in shorthand there, but you write it down as the full word in the exam. And also write down the units, joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. E stands for heat energy. And heat energy is measured in joules. M stands for mass. And the SI units for mass are kilograms. That delta, that stands for the change in something. And theta is temperature. So delta theta is the change in temperature. Now the change in temperature can either be in degrees Celsius or Kelvins. Kelvins was explained in the first chapter. I'll use degrees Celsius for now. But sometimes you will see when you look at the, uh, the units given on the paper, that will be per K, K to the power of minus one. So here's my first formula, E is equal to MC delta theta. Use that formula, any time a substance has its temperature changing. Now, 
There is something closely associated with that called heat capacity. And the distinction between specific heat capacity, whose symbol is little c, and heat capacity, whose symbol is capital C. Now, slight distinction. Sometimes they don't give you the mass of something. You see, little c is to do with the, the, the energy per kilogram. Let's say we have a spoon here, and I don't care how heavy it is. All I care is this. I have a value called big C, which is its heat capacity. And its value is 100 joules per degree Celsius for this particular spoon. Now, what does that mean? That means that for that spoon there, I've got to add 100 joules of heat energy to make the temperature of that spoon go up by one degree Celsius. I don't care about the mass of the spoon. This is a number for the entire spoon. So when they use capital C, they will call it heat capacity. Little c, it will be called specific heat capacity. And the formula is very like this formula here, except I don't have the mass in it. So therefore my formula becomes E is equal to C by delta theta. That formula is also in the table book. Now let's do a question on that. I'm going to do uh, from page 7 in the notes. I'm going to do example number 3. Or sorry, example number 2. Um, which says a metal spoon at a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius is put into a cup of 250 grams of hot water at 65 degrees Celsius causing its temperature to fall by 3 degrees Celsius. This is what we call a mixing problem. So what I want to do with this problem is just sketch a little diagram. There's my spoon. They're telling me in this particular uh, problem that the starting temperature of the spoon is 15 degrees Celsius. We're going to put that into a cup of water. Sometimes they mention the container, sometimes they don't. Look, if they don't mention the container, that will not be part of my solution. If they do mention a container, like a calorimeter, that's very much part of our solution. Um, we'll see examples of that later on. Now, the mass of the water in the container is 250 grams. Its temperature at the moment is 65 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to put the spoon into the water. As a result of that, the spoon is going to absorb heat from the water. There is a, an energy or a heat transfer. Always write down the energy equation. The energy gained by the spoon by putting it into the hottish water is equal to the energy lost by the water. Heat is going to flow from a hotter body to a colder body until it reaches something called, and here's a nice little expression, thermal equilibrium. They come to the same temperature. Anyway, the question is, I need, to, in this particular problem, to find the heat capacity. When they say heat capacity, they didn't use that word specific. I'm talking about big C. So I'm talking about big C for that particular spoon. Anyway, what happened to the temperature when I put the spoon into the water? They told me that the temperature falls by 3 degrees Celsius. So it goes from 65 degrees down to 62 degrees Celsius. You see that final temperature, 62 degrees Celsius? Put a box around that. That's the final temperature of everything. That's the final temperature of the spoon and that's the final temperature of the water. Now, I have my energy equation. The energy gained by the spoon is equal to the energy lost by the water. Now I'm going to write in my formulae. Well, they didn't mention any mass of the spoon, didn't they? They're talking about heat capacity. What's the formula for 
the energy, when we mention just heat capacity, it's E is equal to C by delta theta. What's the energy gained by the spoon? It's going to be C by delta theta, brackets, spoon. And that's equal to the energy lost by the water. Now they didn't mention the mass of the water, so I'm going to use my normal formula, which is E is equal to MC delta theta. So it's going to be M C delta theta, brackets, and I'll write W there. So how do we solve these problems? We draw a little diagram. We write down in words some kind of energy equation. Then we write the formulae. And now finally we put the numbers in. So what are the numbers? I'm looking for a big C. What's the change in temperature of the spoon? The spoon was 15 degrees Celsius and it changes into becomes 62 degrees Celsius. Take those two numbers away. Now make sure that you always keep the change in temperature positive. Don't let it go negative. So it's going to be 62 minus 15 degrees Celsius. Use your calculator, use your head. I get 47 degrees Celsius. And that's equal to the energy lost by the water. The mass of the water, look, they gave me the mass of the water in grams. And I know that the SI units for mass are kilograms. So you always have to change grams into kilograms. Now I wouldn't bother using my calculator because it just takes too long. It's very, very simple. You're going to divide by a thousand. And if I divide by a thousand, what do I do? I jump the decimal point one, two, three to the left. So that gives me 0.25 kilograms. So the mass of the water is 0.25. The SHC of the water, they have to give you that in the question. And it's given on page seven in example two in your notes. And its value is 4,180. Multiplied by the change in temperature of the water. There's the starting temperature of the water. 65 degrees Celsius, there's the finishing temperature. So the change in temperature, keeping it positive, is 65 minus 62, which is three degrees Celsius. So now, finally, some simple algebra. I'm gonna solve for C. Just slide the 47 down, so it's 0.25 by 4,180 by three divided by 47. So put that into your calculator. And you know when you're watching this video, um, always have your calculator in front of you. So be an active learner. Don't be a passive learner where you just sit back and watch the teacher do everything. That's the only way you'll really learn is by doing everything yourself. So I get an answer of 66.7. Always write down the units when you're finished. We're talking about the units for heat capacity. Uh, so there's no, there's no kilograms in it. So basically it's gonna be joules per degree Celsius. So essentially what I'm saying is, for that particular spoon, if I want to raise the temperature of that entire spoon, I'm gonna to have to put in 66.7 joules of heat energy to make that spoon go up by one degree Celsius. Right, let's move on to slightly more complicated problems. I'm now gonna move on to example three, which is on page seven in the notes. So example three tells me, when 25 grams of warm copper, how will I show the copper? These are little bits of copper, sometimes called copper turnings. So when 25 grams of warm copper were placed in 20 grams of water, there's my 20 grams of water, at 12 degrees Celsius, 
it was found that the temperature of the water increased to 22 degrees Celsius. They sometimes say this, assuming no energy was transferred to the surroundings. So in other words, it's an absolutely perfect problem that the hot copper went into the water and all the heat stayed in the system. It didn't leak out into the atmosphere. Anyway, it's 25 grams of copper. Remember what you do? We turn that into kilograms. You don't always have to turn it into kilograms because, you know, if it's grams on both sides, it will actually work out sometimes. But I would suggest, you know, just get into the habit of turning it into kilograms. You don't have to worry about anything. Divide by a thousand, decimal point at the end, one, two, three, that's 0 0.025 kilograms. Mass of the water, 20 grams, change into kilograms, 0 0.02 kilograms. So I'm going to put the hot copper into the water. What are the temperatures? The, uh, the water is at 12 degrees Celsius. So I'm probably going to have a thermometer in here to measure the change in temperature of the water. So at the moment, it's at 12 degrees Celsius. And when the copper gets put into the water, the water's temperature increases to 22 degrees Celsius. That will be the final temperature of everything. That will be the final temperature of the copper turnings and the water. So I'm just going to put a box around that. And what's the question they're asking me? They're saying calculate the original temperature of the copper. The original temperature we'll call theta. So theta is equal to question mark. So that's my first step, isn't it? Nice diagram. All the information that I need is there. What about constants? Well, they've given me a constant. They've given me two constants. They've given me the SHC of water, CW. And they've given me the SHC of copper, C of copper. 4,180. Units are a bit of a mouthful all the time, aren't they? Joules per kilogram per degree Celsius, and 390 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. This formula here is your normal formula. The one that I did for example too, they use occasionally. They just talk about heat capacity, but in general you're going to be using MC delta theta most of the time. Now, problem set up. All my information is right there in front of me. Now I write down my energy equation in words. Something gains, something loses. Well, the hot copper goes into the cold water and as a result of that, the copper is going to lose energy and the water is going to gain energy. Right, what's the formula for the energy? Well, they're both staying as they are, but just changing temperature. What I mean by staying as they are, they're not melting, they're not vaporizing. That would be the next class when we talk about specific latent heat. So if they stay as they are, as they are and their temperature changes, I'm going to use MC delta theta. So I'm going to use MC delta theta. Uh, to show that's all to do with copper, put copper there. And then the energy gained by the water is MC delta theta, W. Now let's put the numbers in. The only number I don't know is the starting temperature of the copper turnings. Well, the mass of the copper, 0 0.025. The SHC of copper, 390. The change in temperature of the copper. This is the hardest thing that you're going to do. The starting temperature of the copper was theta, and the final temperature is 22. Now remember, I want to keep delta theta positive. So I've got to imagine approximately where is theta. I think it's fair enough to assume that theta must be bigger than 22. 
It certainly couldn't be less than 22. If it was less than 22, there's no way the temperature would get up to 22. So I can assume that theta is bigger than 22. So when I take them away, it's going to be theta, starting temperature of copper, minus 22, final temperature of copper, and final temperature of everything. So the change in temperature of the copper is theta minus 22. And that's equal to the energy gained by the water, the mass of water, 0 0.02. The SHC of water, 4,180. And the change in temperature of the water, well that's easy. Starts at 12, goes to 22, keep it positive. 22 minus 12 is 10. I want to solve that for theta. Look, there's lots of ways you can solve it. You know, I'll show you one way, but you're, you'll be doing it yourself anyway. But the way I would solve that is, do you see that bracket there? I would leave that on its own, and I would divide by those two numbers on the other side and slide them down. So I end up getting theta minus 22. I actually don't need the brackets now. It's equal to 0 0.02 by 4,180 by 10 divided by... 0 0.025 by 390. So I'm going to put that into my calculator. So I get theta minus 22 is equal to, say, 85.7. And then finally, I'm going to work out theta by jumping the minus 22 across and adding it on. You've got that number in your calculator already. And I get 107.7 degrees Celsius. So that's going to be, that was the original temperature of the copper, which is fine. I mean, I don't know what the melting point of uh, copper is, but that answer is fine. If it was water, for example, it wouldn't be fine because water boils, vaporizes at 100 degrees Celsius. Right, let's just do one more example on SHC, and that will conclude the lesson. So, the last example, example four, it's on page eight in your notes. And it says, 350 grams of water at 75 degrees Celsius is mixed with 400 grams of water at 10 degrees Celsius contained in a copper calorimeter. So actually, the container now becomes an important part of this. So the container is very much part of the overall equation. Anyway, what's our first step in these problems? nice diagram with all the information on it second step energy equation in words third step write down your formulae and then do your calculation so let's move on to example four which is on on page eight in your notes uh, example four says 350 grams of water at 75 degrees celsius is mixed with 400 grams of water at 10 degrees celsius contained in a copper calorimeter. This time, the container is going to matter because calorimeters will absorb heat. I'm gonna represent the calorimeter in red like that. Now, I've also got two waters. Uh, so I don't be writing down W on one side, W on the other, and confusing things. So I'm gonna call one water A and the other water B. So the mass of water A MA is 350 grams, and of course, change that into kilograms, 0.35 kilograms. We have 400 grams of the other water, we'll call that B. So MB is 0.4 kilograms when you change it from grams into kilograms. What about the temperatures? This water here is at 75 degrees Celsius. 
The other water is at 10 degrees Celsius. Now, what you have to understand is this, is that water and that calorimeter are together, and they are what we call in thermal equilibrium, where heat will flow from one to the other. So, if, that, if the temperature of the water is at 10 degrees Celsius, once it's been sitting there a sufficiently long time, the temperature of the calorimeter will also be 10 degrees Celsius. Now, as a result of that, when you mix them together, the temperature will change. Well, if I put that hot water into that coldish water, the temperature will go up. We don't know what that number is, so I'm going to call that theta. And that's what I have to find. That will be the final temperature of everything, so I'm going to put a box around it. They gave me the mass of the calorimeter as well, the mass of cal, that's 120 grams, I'm just going to go directly in my head to kilograms, that's 0.12 kilograms. We have our usual SHCs, the SHC of water and the SHC of copper, they're available to you as well. So there's my problem. So my next thing then is to write down an energy equation. Now, that water there, that's going to cool down. You can imagine where theta is. If you pour water at 75 degrees Celsius into water at 10 degrees Celsius, the temperature is going to settle somewhere between 75 and 10. So I'm going to say, here's my energy equation in words. The energy lost by A. What gains? B gains. So it's going to be the energy gained by B. And this time I've got to include the calorimeter. So it's plus energy gained by calorimeter. Cal for short. What's my formula? Well, I just have one formula so far. One main formula, E is equal to mc delta theta. The other one I did with big C, we just use that occasionally. That's really the one we use most times. Uh, so write them in. The energy lost by A, mc delta theta. Brackets A is equal to mc delta theta. Put B outside the brackets, plus MC delta theta for the calorimeter. And the calorimeter is made of copper. Now let's put my numbers in. Now the hardest thing here will be the temperatures, the delta thetas. Well, the mass of A, that's 0.35. It's water, isn't it? 4,180 is its SHC. What's the change in temperature of A? So be careful with this. The starting temperature of A, 75 degrees Celsius. The final temperature of everything, theta. And I said theta somewhere between 10 and 75. So in order to keep it positive, it's going to be 75 minus theta. So the change in temperature of A, 75 minus theta. B, its mass is 0.4. SHC, 4180. And the change in temperature of B? Well, the starting temperature is 10. The final temperature is theta. Theta is higher. Keep it positive. It's going to be theta minus 10. Plus the energy gained by the calorimeter. Mass 0.12. The SHC of the calorimeter. The calorimeter is made of copper. So that's 390. And the change in temperature. 
Well, that's going to be exactly the same as the change in temperature of water B, theta minus 10. They're in thermal equilibrium. Now, that's the physics of it actually finished. The rest of it is just mathematics. Multiplying everything out, uh, bringing all your thesis to one side, bringing all your numbers to the other side, which I've done in the solution, so you can check it in the solutions. I'm just going to check the answer. The answer, all the answers to these questions, in chapter 2 are on page 12. And the answer I get, for example, for, I get theta is equal to 39.9 degrees Celsius. So make sure you do that mathematical calculation yourself and you get that answer. And if you're unsure of it, check it in the solutions. Okay, so I'm just going to wrap up this lesson now. That was the uh, first part of chapter two. Uh, we did something called specific heat capacity. And basically, what do I mean by SHC? It's basically how quickly a body can raise its temperature. Some bodies, like copper, you add a little bit of heat and its temperature goes shooting up. Other things like water, a little bit slower. That property of the material, that's called SHC. Okay, so thanks for listening. Uh, and we'll move on to lesson two shortly. Thank you.